So then here's how we're going to go about solving this. We know that there are 10 carbons because it's decane, right? Decane tells us, DEC tells us 10 carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A and E tells us there it's an alkane, um, so meaning that all of the carbons in this chain will have a single bond. And so we know that there's a propyl group on carbon 5. So first thing you should do, I would say, is you're going to just figure out where, how you're going to number your carbons. Um, so if you want to start with that, then I guess it would be easier to do it like this. If there are 10 carbons, then if you go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, the third position on either side is going to be the same. So I like to start from right to left. So carbon 1, carbon 2. On 2, there is a methyl group. See this trimethyl? means that there's going to be three methyl groups. So I'll put it down here just for, for visualization, CH3. Now on carbon 3, we have another CH3. And on carbon 4, we have another CH3. Okay? Now on the fifth carbon, that's what this 5 is here for, we have a propyl group. So it's going to go... So that is a carbon bonded to two CH2s and a CH3. So we go up for one CH2, another CH2 there, and then this last one up here will be a CH3. But I, you, don't, you don't write any of those. You, know, you, you obviously emit CH3. But I want to point this out because even though this says trimethyl, and we already have our three methyl groups here, this fourth methyl isn't part of that. It's part of the propyl group. So that's why it's not counted as four methyls. So essentially it's going to look like this. You have two, three, four trimethyl, five, fifth carbon propyl group, and the whole thing is a decane. Ten carbons and single bonds between all of them. So that's how you do that one.